Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 5 starts now. Police continue to warn of the dangers that speeding can have, why it's important to go slow when out on the roads. It's a special day in Poplar Grove as one fire department swears in their new chief. But the ceremony also honors a former chief. And bands take the stage at the Rockford Speedway today for a special fundraiser. It's all about bringing smiles to kids in the hospital. Good evening, I'm Taylor Castro. Thanks for joining us tonight. First breaking news out of Indiana. One person is dead and 17 other people are wounded after a shooting Sunday morning. It happened in Muncie, Indiana, about an hour northeast of Indianapolis. EMS was called to the scene of a large party just after 1 a.m. They found multiple people shot when they arrived. A 30-year-old Muncie resident died from his injuries. A witness said the shooting happened in a split second. No arrests have been made. Illinois State Police are cracking down on speeding. To get drivers to slow down, you can expect to see more officers writing tickets. Police are reminding drivers that speeding increases your stopping distance and reduces the effectiveness of seatbelts and airbags. If you do end up in a crash while speeding, you're more likely to suffer severe injuries or even death. They think that five miles over, 10 miles over, they're not gonna get stopped, they're not doing anything wrong. We get it, you have places you wanna go, but we're asking you to please obey those speed limits. They're there for a reason. Slow down, leave sooner, drive slower, live longer. Illinois State Police say speeding is involved in about a third of all vehicle deaths across the country. Data from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration shows in 2021, Illinois had 487 speed-related traffic deaths. The community gathers at a state line fire department to celebrate a changing of the guard. North Boone Fire Protection District 3 held a ceremony to swear in their new chief, E.J. Dillonardo. He has 39 years of experience, having spent 30 of them with the Rockford Fire Department. He also has a background in EMS, helping the district establish their ambulance service. Dillonardo came out of retirement to become the new chief. It was pretty simple. They, they were looking for a chief and uh, they called me up and I started meeting with the board and uh, you know we talked about it. and. They're just a great group of people. It's a great organization. There's no flaws in the organization. Uh, it's just going to, I think it's going to be fun to work with them, their family, and move the department forward. Dillonardo wasn't the only honoree today. After the swearing in, the district honored past Chief Gail Worley for his decades of service. The Chief Gail Worley Training Tower was dedicated to him. It's a state of the art building that he fought to get back in 2010. The honor was quite the surprise. The naming of the tower, that was just, that was a bonus. Um, that, um, I, say, I didn't feel I did anything special. I was just doing my job at the time, but um, a lot of the firemen and the new chief, they um, felt differently, so. Chief Dillonardo also spoke about former Chief Worley being a mentor who he has been able to learn from. Over 20 bands are in Loves Park for a fundraiser that helps bring some comfort to children in the hospital. All proceeds from Danny's Toy Show are used to buy toys and art supplies for the kids in the UW Swedish American Hospital's pediatric department. They work year-round putting together baskets for holidays like Christmas, Easter, and Halloween. There's live music all afternoon and evening at the Rockford Speedway, as well as vendors, auctions, and raffles. The event's founder is grateful for everyone who has been a part of it. What we're doing and why we're doing it here, like I said, is for the kids, it's for the families, it's, for, it's to help them get through this bad situation that they might be in, help them, uh, you know, lift their spirits just a little bit. This is their 14th year holding the event. There's still time to head over. The show goes until 10 tonight. Former President Trump's legal fees are piling up, signaling cash problems for his campaign. Tomorrow, the Save America Super PAC is expected to disclose that it spent more than $40 million on legal fees alone to defend Trump and others. The costs are getting so high that, according to the New York Times, the PAC requested a refund on a $60 million contribution it made to another group supporting Trump. The former president will not pay his legal bills on his own or set up a defense fund. 
President Biden may face another challenger for the Democratic nomination. The New York Times reports Representative Dean Phillips is considering a run against the president. The Minnesota Democrat is vocal about wanting the party to be led by younger leaders. He has said 80-year-old Biden should not seek re-election because of his age. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Marianne Williamson also launched primary campaigns earlier this year. Back-to-back -back health incidents have lawmakers and the public questioning how long is too long to serve. Chad Program is on Capitol Hill with more. Just say aye. Okay, just aye. Renewed debate over aye. age and politics. Longtime California Senator Dianne Feinstein appeared confused during a Senate committee meeting just one day after Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell momentarily froze mid-remarks. The back-to-back -back health incidents posing the question, how long is too long to remain in office? How are you feeling now? Fellow lawmakers coming to McConnell's defense. He said he's fine. I take him at face value. This isn't McConnell's first health scare. He missed six weeks earlier this year after suffering a concussion and a fractured rib after a fall. As for Feinstein, now the oldest sitting senator and member of Congress, Thursday's episode comes on the heels of mounting questions about her health, especially since Feinstein was out for months following a bout with shingles. Questions linger over the health of Senator John Fetterman. He struggles to speak publicly and process audio after a stroke. I believe there should be a criteria of fitness to serve. Republicans raise questions about the competency and age of President Biden, though recognizing his prospective Republican challenger is just three years younger. We all age differently. The age range in Congress is growing increasingly older. The median age for senators is now 65, a record high. That was Chad Program reporting. Monsoon th thunderstorms are expected to bring relief to the southwest after days of scorching heat. Places like Phoenix, Arizona could see temperatures under 110 degrees for the first time in over 30 days. But in California, triple digits are expected to stick around through tomorrow. This July is on track to be the hottest on record. While the Northern Hemisphere is facing a record-breaking heat wave, the South Pole is breaking another record. The Antarctic sea ice has fallen to an all-time low for this time of year. Typically, the sea ice gets to its lowest levels around the end of February then builds back up. But this year, the ice isn't returning to normal levels. It's about 1.6 million square kilometers below last year's record low. Scientists are calling it an alarming signal of climate change. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. A little more comfortable out there this afternoon compared to what it felt like the last few days when we had the heat index up over 100 degrees. Came to an end with some pretty strong thunderstorms during Friday morning and then again Friday night. Yesterday was still rather humid. Today a little more comfortable. It was warm, but our temperatures this afternoon in the upper 70s and low 80s. We take a live look with our SkyTrack camera here down in Rochelle. Had some skydivers come down just a little bit ago, maybe taking another group up there. Some fair weather cumulus clouds along with some higher base cloud cover. Things are going to stay pretty quiet as we go through the overnight tonight. 79 our temperature in Rochelle, 78 in DeKalb and 77 here in Rockford. You notice there is just a little bit of a heat index. Dew point temperatures up some in a couple locations. 81 for a weather watcher this last hour. Jim here in Rockford. Dew point temperature sits at 58. Dew points across the region, upper 50s, low 60s, so there is still some moisture. I mean, it's the end of July after all, so we're not going to feel that totally dry air mass, but at least it's not uh, hot and humid like I mentioned it was just a couple days ago. Now, we will see some cloud cover kind of work in here from some showers and thunderstorms that are off to the west of us. These are not going to be a factor kind of riding along a stationary boundary stretching from the plains through the lower uh, Midwest. These will pass kind of to our south, but we get a little cloud cover as a result of that these next couple of days. And with that boundary staying to the the south of us and west, it means our conditions are going to stay fairly dry. So that high heat that we had late last week kind of pushed a little further down to the south. We maintain this northwest flow in our jet stream, so it doesn't allow those 90 degree temperatures to kind of work this far to the east. Eventually what is going to happen, this strong ridge of high pressure centered over Texas, so that heat eases here out to the west. You heard earlier about those monsoon uh, rains starting to begin, still dealing with some heat though 
flow across parts of California. So more moisture working in as that center of that ridge shifts a little further to the east. Eventually this does begin to break down. So it will bring our temperatures up towards the middle to end of the week. So we're back into the mid and even upper 80s, which is actually above average. But another pattern change coming in towards the end of the weekend and early next week could actually bring us a cooler pattern here by the time we look into the beginning of August. Well, actually this uh, upcoming week is the beginning of August. So here we go with that northwesterly flow. Little disturbances moving through. That's where you see kind of those higher wind speeds coming in. But again, dry air mass in place, so not expecting any rainfall. Our first chance for rain comes in once we get into Wednesday, maybe late Wednesday night into Thursday. No real big signal for some rain showers moving in with that. However, with that pattern shift coming up here, first few days of August, that heat continues to settle down across the south and then up through the west. But with a dip in the jet stream, we may start to see a little trend towards cooler than normal temperatures. This time of year, average high, low 80s, and a higher probability for maybe getting into a little more of a wet pattern here as we enter into the first of the month. We are going to stay dry, but cloud cover will see some of that increase here this evening into tomorrow. Tomorrow is almost going to be a carbon copy of today, maybe a little less in the way of cloud cover and more in the way of sunshine and temperatures up a few degrees from where they were today. We made it up to 81 this afternoon. Tomorrow, I think we make it up to 84. Overnight lows, very comfortable. 58 degrees tonight, 60 tomorrow night, 86 on Tuesday, 85 with a little cloud cover there on Wednesday. Upper 80s by the time we get towards the end of the week. Weekend looking fairly comfortable. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. Rockford has a new but familiar women's golf classic champion and she won today with yet another dominating performance. But first, let's give you a look at where the rest of the field finished up today at Aldine Golf Club. The defending champ Ella Greenberg had a much better day today. She shot a 75 to finish in fourth. Naperville's Gabby Hammond finished in third after a nice 81 today. Eva Greenberg came into the day in second place and was trying to make quite the comeback, but it's golf and it was just one of those days. She shot a 79 to take solo second, but the woman to beat was Kayla Silen, and this weekend she was unbeatable. She even got some birdies to drop here on the back nine like this one on the par 3 15th. Silen left the rest of the field in the dust, finishing the tournament at one over par to take this year's golf classic by a mere 13 strokes. It's her second win in this event in the last three years. It's kind of like satisfying because I won it when it was both match play and now it was stroke play this year. So it was, it, it's like a good feeling. I think my short game was really pretty good the past three days because my driver was kind of all over the place and it was a shorter distance that I've been playing, getting ready for college. So it was like a bigger change. So, but I made it work. Of course, congrats to Kayla, and you just heard her mention college as well. She is headed to SIU in a few weeks and will be playing on the golf team there. And a win today is definitely a nice little confidence boost. All right, the biggest thing to note right now with the men is that Lutheran golfer Jake Goosey made a comeback, and now him and Robert Dolphemeyer are headed for a playoff. We'll have those highlights for you later tonight. But TJ Baker made a move up the leaderboard to finish in third at four under, followed by Danny Gorman and Cody Reimer tied in fourth at two under par. The Cubs are hot, hot, hot and trying to stay that way as they finish things out in St. Louis today. Bottom of the second, Cardinals up to zip. Paul Goldschmidt singles to left and drives in a run. That will cap off a two-run, four-hit inning for St. Louis. To the fifth now, Nolan Arenado pops up in foul ground, but Christopher Morell makes the catch and falls into the stands while he does it. What a grab there. Still 3-0, top of the six now, and Arenado will get his revenge as he takes one away from Jan Gomes. The Cardinals win 3-0 to salvage the final game of four. The Cubs are headed to Cincy next to take on the Reds. In other Cubs news, Cody Bellinger is off the market. The Cubs turnaround on the field has led to the club telling opposing teams that the outfielder and soon to be free agent will not be traded. Chicago will now look instead to try and add pieces to the roster prior to Tuesday's trade deadline. The White Sox also getting blanked today by the Guardians 5-0. They are now 21 games below 500. 
The Packers' first week of training camp has come to a close, and wide receiver Samori Toure seems ready for year two. Toure appeared in 11 games last year and scored a touchdown against the Bills. Yesterday, though, was quarterback Jordan Love's best day on the practice field this summer, going 16 for 22. That included a 33-yard deep ball to Toure during the two-minute drill. And it's been plays like that that's given the receiving core confidence in the first-year starting quarterback. I mean, that, that's just how Jay Love is, you know, especially when it comes down to like clutch situations. Everyone notices how, how calm he is. He doesn't, you know, stress out or make it too big. Like he's just he's just comfortable and that makes the rest of the offense comfortable as well. So he's he's a good quarterback to play for for sure. Looks like it'll be much more comfortable outside this week. A dip in the heat and humidity. Yeah, I, you know, last Thursday, Friday, that was rough. Especially out the fair, I bet. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> when, you know, fair week, kind of with the Lee County Fair and uh, Stevenson County Fair wrapping up. Stevenson County was yesterday, Lee County Fair today. Um, Ogle County Fair, I think, kicks off this week. I want to say it is the second, I think, the so on Wednesday. I think it does be, uh, begin. Uh, may see a couple of thunderstorms towards the end of the week and a little more heat, but I don't think we'll see those triple-digit heat index numbers <laughs> Too. Things will be much more comfortable out there tonight. We've got a few clouds out this evening and we may see a little more cloud cover, but our radar will stay dry. The first worn interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. We are in the upper 50s tonight, 84 for tomorrow afternoon, 86 on Tuesday. Just a slight chance for a shower, maybe a thunderstorm. This would be later in the day on Wednesday and then into Thursday, but that chance looks fairly low. You see the numbers get bumped up just a little and then we'll see them dip again by the weekend. Thanks, Candace. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you at 10.